Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. And we'll begin to read at verse 33. I thought there was something wrong. It has fallen off. You're okay, you're okay. Lovely, thank you. Lovely. Acts chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 33. I could give this message tonight a number of titles. I've titled it, The Lamb with the Seven Eyes, taken from Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. I could also entitle it, When the Church Was Young. And I'd love to bring a sermon, When the Church is Old. <clears throat> what a contrast. Will you look at verse 33? And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Neither was any among them that lacked. For as many as was possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and led them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joses, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted, the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet." But, underline that, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart? to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price. Whilst it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost and great Fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered and said unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it? that you have agreed together. Here's a unity for the wrong purpose. How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth buried her by her husband. Now here's the reaction. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. We know tonight that the Holy Spirit who is here will bless the reading of his word. Father, again we pray as we have prayed thousands of times, shut us in with yourself. Make this story alive and may we become alive ourselves. And may God do a mighty work in this house tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Persons like Ananias and Sapphira can do more mischief to the church than all the atheists of the world put together. 
That is the truth that now needs to be understood by every one of us. The word but, which opens this chapter, is like a hammer blow. Prior to this chapter, we are reading wonderful events, event after event taking place, passing on each step of triumph. And suddenly, we come to this word, but. And there is no longer any laughter in her voice. Ananias represents those who say they have done all they can when they know that such is not the case. Brother and sister, the truth is, no man here tonight has done all that he could do. In this incident, we have a beautiful picture and a beautiful revelation of the life of the early church, showing the willingness and the voluntariness of every sacrifice and service rendered by the first Christians. But Satan comes in. Satan comes in and spoils that beauty. Just like he came in and spoiled the beauty of the Garden of Eden. It's significant. Watch this. Right up to this chapter, chapter 5 in the book of Acts, Satan is never mentioned. The church is flowing. And it's strange. Up to the book of Acts in chapter 5, the first mention of church is given. <clears throat> Satan is never mentioned until we come to chapter 5. It's like the opening of the first two chapters of the book of Genesis. We have words like goodness, fruitfulness, and beauty. And then the third chapter says in verse 1, now the serpent was more subtle than any other beast of the field. That's what happened in the church at Jerusalem. Some member, some members had opened their hearts to Satan. Is there anybody here listening to me tonight who has opened their hearts to Satan? <laughs> That's what Peter said to Ananias in verse 3. Ananias, calling him by his name, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back? Three hours later, his wife comes in. Peter says to her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Am I talking tonight to a husband and to a wife who have agreed to keep back? Who have agreed not to serve the Lord? Who have agreed to test God by their hypocrisy? Who have agreed to drift away from the holiness of God? Ladies and gentlemen, such agreement brings death. Verse 9, Peter said, Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. The young men buried her beside the body of her husband. They agreed together to blaspheme against God. They sinned together. They lied together. They were judged together and they were buried together, and they await together the great day. That's when the church was young. Why does this not happen today? Have you ever wondered about that? I'll tell you why. As old Joseph Parker said, and I cut my eye teeth on him, Sometimes God has to live in poor lodgings. There was no poor lodgings in that first century church. The purity 
of that church was amazing. The unity of that church was amazing. And the Holy Spirit could not stand to hypocrites. Why is he standing so many hypocrites today? Because God lives in poor lodgings. We are living in an age in which the Lord Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. That was written to the Laodicean church, the last church of the last seven. Isn't that amazing? Here we have seven eyes that sees everything. Here we have seven churches. And here we are living in the seventh age of the church, the Laodicean church. Brother and sister, look at me tonight. We are living in the last of the last days. That's the days in which we are living. All that God was looking for was honesty. That's reasonable, isn't it? All that God was looking for was honesty. All that God was looking for was sincerity. All that God was looking for was faithfulness. All that God was looking for was integrity. All that God was looking for was openness. I said, in this church, has God got this in our church tonight? We could talk about other churches, but we're talking about our own. Has God got this from us all? Two people dared to tempt God with their hypocrisy, testing God to find out if he knew their hearts and knew what was going on. They discovered to their cost he did know their hearts and he did know what was going on and they died together. A very solemn story. It certainly is. This story's been on my heart for months now. And it says, I'll, I'll bring it because it keeps tormenting me. <laughs> and I have to preach it. <laughs> so they died together. Yes, indeed, but that story began in the early church. And it has been repeated by new Ananiases and new Sapphiras in every generation. There's an Ananias sitting here tonight. There's a Sophia sitting here tonight. Watch for the Holy Spirit. What a job here, especially for the youth, the young men. The young men's mentioned twice here in this chapter. What a job for the young men to be undertakers. They buried these people. Young men, do you fancy it? Mm. They buried these people. The young cannot be better employed than seeking out and burying the falsehood which blights the beauty of the Christian garden. The reaction of the whole church is recorded in verse 11. Dr. Luke says, it's old Dr. Luke writing this story. Nobody else writes it. It's old Luke writing it. And he says, and great fear came upon all the church. Here's the first mention. And as many as heard these things, when the judgments of the Lord are abroad, men stand in awe and meditate on their meanings. But let me come back, and you're listening well to me. Let me come back to what Peter said to Ananias in verse 3. He concludes his statement by saying, Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Now, the Holy Spirit hears me tonight, and I've been trying to turn this over in my mind, and I trust that I don't grieve him. I can lie to David Purse and get away with it. I can lie to any of my sisters sitting here at the front. I can lie to my brethren at the back and get away with it. But I can't lie unto God. I can't lie unto God. Peter said, Thou hast not lied unto men, 
but unto God. That statement still holds good today in the 21st century and in every aspect and service of the church. The possibility of a man telling a lie in prayer ought often to strike us dumb. Have you ever lied in prayer? When you're coming to God, you're coming with an open heart. When you're coming to God, your mind should be clear. What lies are told to God in prayer? Have you ever lied in prayer or in the midst of the most elaborate devotions? A man may be telling lies unto the Holy Ghost in singing his hymn and his morning psalm. A man may never speak and yet be telling lies unto God, bowing down before him in the posture of reverence when the heart is away from him. Where's your heart tonight? Where's your heart, brother? Look at me. Look at me, sister. You're just looking at a humble preacher. And I ask me, where's my heart? It's what Jesus said about the Pharisees. You make long prayers. You make great prayers. But your heart is far from me. And that's the story of Ananias and Sapphira. When a man does something under a great profession of godliness, and yet all the while is making standing room for himself, that man is lying on to God. When a woman gives a little as though she was giving much, she lies not unto men, but unto the Holy Ghost. When a man who ought to lead in the church in its direction and in its liberality lags behind and deprives the church of the influence of his example and stimulus. He is not inflicting some little human injury. He is not thrusting a weapon into the skin of a mortal foe. He seeks deceitfully indeed and with the abundance of protestation to the country to plumb the steel into the very heart of the living God. That's what's happening, I believe, in our nation tonight. Brother and sisters, we shall err in our whole worship and service if we imagine that our whole service in the church terminates upon human elements and human consideration. When Ananias spoke to Peter, Peter said to him, in effect, I am not your judge. I am only a man which stands before you visibly. The judge is in heaven. And the lie which thou hast told does not rest in my heart. It goes forward and it grieves the Holy Ghost. I repeat, honesty, Look at me, sister, look at me, brother. I repeat, honesty and sincerity and integrity, God loves and he looks for it in the inward parts. Can he find it in you, brother, tonight? Can he find it in you, sister? Will you let the Holy Ghost examine you? And if he points his finger, then will you get down on your knees and get right with God and ask God to fill you with himself. These are the days in which we are living. <clears throat> but when a man comes and says, I could give you all this, but I shall only give a little part of it, he is an honest man. You see, if Ananias and Sapphira had to come forward and said to Peter, look, we sold our land, we're giving you half of it, or we're giving you a quarter of it, Peter, like myself, would have broke his arm to get rid of it. But he didn't say that. He gave the impression he was giving us all. He was giving the impression, I have sold my land like Barnabas, and I'm giving it all the proceeds to you. And God saw that. When a man comes and says, take this gift, it is all I have, and yet behind it, there lies somewhat which he has kept in reserve, then he is prepared for the terrible destiny of Ananias and Sapphira. The lesson of this story is, are you ready for this? 
Don't go to a church where the Holy Ghost is. That's the lesson of this story. So we church up the road and they go through the motions. Go to it. But don't go to a church where the Holy Ghost is. Don't go to a church where the Lamb who has seven eyes sees everything. Don't go to a church where the power of God is present. Go to a church where the leadership is pompous, where the preacher is a harling, where the members are worldly and selfish, where the emphasis is prosperity and getting to know who's who. But don't go to a church where the spirit of the living God is. Where God the Holy Ghost convicts of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment to come. And I know tonight, as I speak, he is convicting of sin and of righteousness and of judgment to come. You've come here tonight, say, Pastor, you don't usually preach like this. No, I don't. But this word has been led upon my heart, and I'm giving it so that I can sleep at night. I think about it. I get up in the morning and think about it. And I'm taking the blood of my skirts and being free so that you will know what is the will of God for your life. He just wants you to be honest. Can I hear an amen? Amen. He just wants you to be faithful. He just wants you to be sincere. He just wants you to follow him and to love him with all of your heart. Did you notice another telltale little verse, verse 13, Dr. Luke records, after this happened, it says, and of the rest, a durst, that word durst means dared, and of the rest, dared no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. What does that mean? The hypocrite said, I'm not joining that church. That's what it means. The hypocrite said, I'm not joining that church. The liar said, I'm not joining that church. The pretender said, I'm not going to join that church. Listen, friend, on the outskirts of Jerusalem, there's a little church with the whip of a pastor who will let you do anything just as long as you pay into his church. There's churches like that today. There's churches like that today. But don't join this Holy Ghost church because the Holy Ghost is the seven eyes before the throne. And he sees everything. His eyes, according to the prophet, run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect toward him. My prayer is, may the Holy Ghost fall in his church and reveal the living Christ because the only way the living Christ can be revealed is through the Holy Ghost. Can I hear a praise the Lord? A silence here is deafening. I know God has spoken to me and I spoke speaking to you. The Holy Ghost will see the Gehazi's in 2 Kings chapter 5. You know the story of Naaman the leper and Elisha and Gehazi, Elisha's servant. And Elisha's servant, Gehazi, told a deliberate lie and planned a deliberate lie like Ananias did. He made it up in his mind like Ananias and Sapphira. Can you see this husband and wife talking together? Now, they're all giving money to Peter that we'll give ours, but we'll make it sure that Peter thinks it's everything. Can you hear that conversation? Has there ever been a conversation like that in your house? Has there ever been a conversation with your partner? You see, God is looking for that sincerity and that faithfulness. And here, here, Gehazi watches Elisha 
And Naaman is healed of his leprosy. And Naaman says, now let me give you a gift. Let me give you these changes of raiment. Let me give you these, this silver. And do you know what Elisha says? No, I don't want anything. He says, go and dip in Jordan seven times. He didn't even come out and lay his hand on him. He just says, I don't want anything. That's not like the preachers of today, sure it's not. You wouldn't see them refusing any gifts, would you? Okay, here's I see. So here, Naaman says to Naaman, or Elisha says to, to Naaman, I don't want anything. Go away and enjoy your healing. But Gehazi watches this, and we are told he runs after Naaman. And he says, oh, my master suddenly remembered he needs change the freeman for his servants. He needs silver for this. He needs silver for that. And of course, a delighted Naaman was pleased to give this gift to Gehazi. That was all right. But him with the seven eyes before the throne saw it. Did you hear that? Him with the seven eyes before the throne saw it and revealed it to his servant Elisha as he did reveal to Ananias' hypocrisy to Simon Peter. But listen to Elisha to Gehazi. Went not my heart with thee. Wow. As if God just said, look here, and show them a picture of Gehazi running to Naaman's chariot. Went not my heart with thee. Listen, we talk about modern times. See, in those times, they were miles ahead of us. Miles ahead of us in the supernatural power of the living God. Went not my heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet you. Now listen to this. God revealed to Naaman what Gehazi was going to do with this money. He says, is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants? That was Gehazi's plan. And God revealed Gehazi's plan to his servant Elisha. That's what you plan to do with the money, Gehazi. But you didn't plan for this. The leprosy, the wrath of Naaman, shall cleave to thee and to thy seed forever. Isn't that amazing? The leprosy of Naaman shall cleave to you and your seed forever. And we're told that Gehazi went out from Elisha's presence, the man with the double portion of the Holy Spirit, a leper as white as snow. Friend and brother and sister, this God still lives. I know you're looking at me. Look again. This God still lives. I'm going to say it again. This God still lives. And that's the God that I have served from a boy of eight. And that's the God that David Purse has served as a young boy in White Well. And that's the God I intend to serve until my last breath. I'm going to repeat it again. This God still lives. <clears throat> and he sees your heart. I'm going to say something. See if God chastises you. Don't worry about it. Take the chastisement. Chastisement is different to judgment. You chastise a child to make the child better. If you judge a child, you throw the child out. If God chastises you, that's a proof that you're born again. Go on with him and serve him. He's a wonderful Lord. This God still lives. Say praise the Lord. I'm talking about serious things tonight. He's in this house tonight. He's here to reveal secrets, and he's here to punish sin and to chastise his people. But above all, above all, he's here to forgive sin. Can I hear a praise the Lord? He's here 
to forgive sin. Listen, friend, you can leave tonight your sins forgiven. You can leave tonight, lady, <clears throat> your sins forgiven. You can leave backslider tonight restored and your sins forgiven. And listen, Christian, you can leave tonight with your sins forgiven. What are you covering up? What are you hiding? You can leave tonight cleansed and made clean. I'll finish by saying this. Ananias, or Hananiah, that's his name. Ananias, or Hananiah, means God is gracious. Sapphira was an uncommon name in the New Testament. It's thought to have derived from Armenian culture. Her name means beautiful, taken from a sapphire. So, sister, become beautiful. Become beautiful inside. We're not looking on your countenance. Brother, we're not looking on your countenance. Just be beautiful inside. These two people, Ananias and Sapphira, they were beautiful inside. And God is wanting you to be beautiful inside. They never lived up to their names. In fact, their characters were the opposite. They were professors, not possessors. Did you hear that? They were professors, not possessors. Are you just a professor? Or are you a possessor? We're told about the five wise and the five foolish who took oil in their lamps. The Lord Jesus said five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. And the wise took oil in their lamps with their vessels. The foolish only took oil in their lamps and they burned out. Have you burned out? Is there oil in your vessel as well as your lamp? Is there oil in your vessel as well as your lamp? What is the vessel? The vessel is the heart. Brothers and sisters, that's what God is looking for these days. These are the types of people in the church, the professor, the real person. The professor, just who makes a profession, but the real person is the possessor. What are you and who are you? I must close. Can I hear a praise the Lord? Can I hear it again? Hands up who have enjoyed God's word. This is to make you think. This is to make you think. The sin of Ananias and Sapphira was the sin of pretending. Say pretending. The sin of Ananias and Sapphira was the sin of pretending. Pretending that part was all. It was a sin of hypocrisy, of attempting to appear what they really were not, of endeavoring to make it appear that they had done what they really had not. The sin was that of lying, so the apostle named it. How is it, he says, that you've conceived this thing in your heart? You've not lied unto men, but unto God. Notice the heart. <clears throat> you've conceived this thing in the heart. You have not lied unto men, unto God. Friend, did it ever occur to you if a man attends a convention or a religious service and sings with fervor, my all is on the altar, when it is not, he is committing the sin of Ananias and Sapphira. When you come to the hymns, I laid all on the altar. You can sing that and go out and just do whatever you want. See, when I come to words like that, I shut up. I'm scared to lie to God. I'm scared to say to God what I don't mean. And that's what's happening in the church today. God make white well tonight a mighty house whose people love the Lord with all of their heart. Can I hear a praise the Lord? The early church looked on this. Now watch this. 
you that are looking for the supernatural, watch this. The early church looked on this as a miracle of judgment. See if God started to come into our midst like he did in Acts chapter 4 and Acts chapter 5. What happened here? What would this place be like if God really come into our midst? We're talking about reality tonight. I want the Lord, and I've seen the Lord doing wonderful things. Can I say praise the Lord? Can you say it? Will you say praise the Lord? I often look back with wonder and astonishment and amazement and ever-increasing awe at the awful atmosphere of the purity of the early church in which a lie could not live. A lie could not live in the purity of the early church. Oh, it went on. For 15 years, the church at Jerusalem was fantastic. Do you know many members of that? 50,000. But then they became comfortable. And do you know what God had to do? He sent persecution and scatter them. And then we're told, wherever they were scattered, they preached the word. But God could move them. And the only way he could move them was through persecution. And do you know, I read today and listened today of millions of Christians that are being persecuted around the world. And here in Britain, we are living in the comfort zone. We are accepting laws because we're frightened to be put in prison. We're frightened to be fined. We're frightened that they'll take away our homes. We're frightened. Listen, they did it in the past. We need again to take our stand for him and to serve him. Can I hear him praise the Lord? Oh, but you, you, you have to use wisdom. In other words, sister, what you're saying is we've got to shut up. We've got to take our stand and we've got to live for God in every way. The early church looked on this as a miracle of judgment. Here's where it reached. Ananias with the Holy Ghost. The two cannot live side by side. Ananias had to go and fear fell upon the church. But I'm sorry to say, that was only for about 15 years. It's amazing how revivals don't last. God's people get stirred, and then they slump back into their old ways again. I don't want to be like that. Well, pastor, how can you go back to your old ways? You're an old lad. I'm 82. I'll be 83 soon. And I'm dusting the policy papers. <laughs> and I've paid for my grave, but I resent it. <laughs> I resent it. I'm waiting for the upper taker. Can I hear a praise the Lord? Who are you waiting on tonight? Fear fell upon the church. Brother, it's time to get back to the Lord. It's time to serve the Lord. It's time to get out of the rut that we're in. Do you know what someone said? A rut is two feet higher than a grave. And some of us are really in a grave and we need to get out of it. Oh, may God take this word and bless it to our hearts and may God speak to us and deal with us. Can I hear an amen? amen. Can I hear it again? Amen. See every one of you tonight. I love you. I want you to go on with God. But better still, me loving you, sure, look at me. What am I? God loves you. Yes, Stephen. Yes, Jesus loves me. Him with seven eyes. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. I've got about one who sees all. Let's sing that song we sang this morning. I have a father who calls me his home.
time began before even time began my life my life was in his hands he knows my name he knows my name he knows my name he sees Once again for your goodness. Thank you for the privilege that has been ours to meet in your presence in this place. Thank you for the freedom we've had to worship you. Thank you for the freedom we've had to gather around the preaching of your word. And thank you that we've witnessed the Holy Spirit at work with people responding to you, to Jesus, as Savior and King. Put your hand upon them. Bless them. Lead them on with yourself. Make them into the people of God that you would desire them to be. And as we leave this place tonight, let us be conscious of Jesus. Let your presence be our portion in the week ahead. Mold us and shape us and fashion us and guide us according to your perfect will. And now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide upon us until Jesus comes. God bless. It's not a wonderful message this evening. In fact, we nearly seem to say this every week, a challenging word. And as I listened to Pastor McConnell bring that meditation, I thought of God's word when it says, what does the Lord thy God require of thee but to love mercy and to do justly and to walk humbly before thy God? There's one thing that a lot of Christians do today and tell lies, whether it's conscious or unconscious. They will usually say to you when they're speaking to you, God told me this, God told me that. God told me to go here. God told me to go there. And really what they're saying is they're using God as an excuse to get out of a situation or into a situation. Dear friends tonight, listen to me carefully. Never use God as an excuse because God will never stand over your lies. And what you're doing, you're actually going to bring condemnation on yourself and on your life. We live in a loose age today. The fear of the Lord is no longer there. Reverence is no longer there. And holiness, things believers don't talk about. But we serve a holy God and a just God. I like what David said in the Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God. That's my prayer. I trust it's your prayer to keep the heart clean. Because listen, an old servant of God said something many years ago to a Bible school, and I never forgot it. Always do what's right. Leave the rest to God. So walk before him with love and enjoy him. You can't enjoy him when you're lying. You can't enjoy him when you're living a double life. Enjoy your fellowship and communion with God. Keep the heart sweet. Keep your walk right. Keep close. Keep clean for Jesus. And the Lord bless you. We'll hand you over now to Cherif. So like Erwin said, uh, perhaps something's impacted you tonight. Why not contact us? We have so many pastors here in church who would be more than willing to help you. Why not check us out on our social media pages such as Facebook or Twitter? Or why not give us a call or send us an email tomorrow where we'll be more than happy to help you. The information for that will be seen at the very end. So why not take care and God bless.